Hello Stampers, my name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this pretty little card. It's very simple, uh, but I love the bold graphics on this paper and this stamp set. This stamp set is this one, which is called Bloom by Bloom. And it's in the Occasions Catalog on page 25. And here is the stamp set itself and uh, uh, for this particular design I'm using this a uh, um, flower here this flower these two stems and then these little dots on the top and uh, there's no sentiment in this one so you can put any sentiment you'd like with it I am used my one of my new favorites thank you from the Tropical Chic uh, stamp set. And there's the Tropical Chic, another one that's got big bold flowers, which I really love. And there's the thank you from there. So that's what I'm using. And this paper is part of this designer series paper here. And I had just a piece of it left from the paper share that I did this year. And so I had a strip that was six by six. There it is, a piece that was six by six. And if you do the card this way, this piece down here at the bottom is only a, an inch wide. It's four, five and a quarter long, but it's only an inch wide, which means that even out of a piece of six by six paper, you could get six of these cards from one little piece of uh, of this paper. You could do the same thing by doing this paper and picking different colors for the top. But this appealed to me. I was in kind of a Calypso Coral mood here. <laughs> and then this set also has this pretty Calypso Coral ribbon, 3 8 inch satin ribbon, and I used that for this as well. The inks that I'm using are um, Call Me Clover, and then I have a small spot uh, of Calypso Coral because I'm doing this on my Stamparatus. Because this stamp, being big and solid, I found probably needs to be stamped a couple of times to get a really good crisp image. Um, so I'm going to suggest to you how to set up your Stamparatus to do this successfully. And then on the inside, I use the small flower. So you have to stamp everything you're going to stamp here first on multiple cards, then take that stamp off to do this one on the inside or do this one on the inside first a bunch of times before you put it on here. Now, placement. On this, I put the two flowers too close, so I actually had to use a mask so that I could stamp my second flower. Now, that defeats the whole purpose of using Stamparatus and making it go really fast. So what I did was I set up my Stamparatus and I sacrificed one piece of cardstock. Let me see if I still have it here. I do. Uh, well, I figured out the placements and so I tried it different places and tried different things here until I got it to come out exactly the way I want. So uh, what I did was I set up the two flowers right next to each other. Now with the edge that's on the uh, on the stamps themselves, they end up being that far apart. So it, it will work just beautifully for us. And I've got everything mounted here. My sentiment, my flowers on one side, and my green stems on the other. So uh, let's just get started. You need uh, to do it the way I did it. I used a piece of Call Me Clover, 8.5 by 5.5, scored and folded at... <laughs> Eight and a half by five and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter. Then you need two pieces of Whisper White that are four by five and a quarter. One for the inside and one for the outside. So really a pretty simple little card. All right, so let's take our piece here first and get it set down here. This is the one I'm going to do my leaves on. So now I just have to find what I did with my, there it is. These magnets are great, but they stick to everything. 
and you can't always tell exactly where they are. So that's going to stamp right there. So I can put my magnets here and down here to keep this from moving and keep them away from one another. All right, I'm going to take my Call Me Clover ink here and I'm going to ink up my flowers, I mean my leaves here, and I'm going to ink them up and ink them up and ink them up because I found that um, because this is a big solid stamp like this, uh, you really have to put a, quite a bit of ink on this in order to get it to stamp the way you want. So there we go. I've got it down there and I'm going to just press down on all of the spots here and get my ink down. Now I will pick this up and that's actually pretty good but I want good crisp images here so I'm going to ink the top. Now this bottom part is going to be underneath paper so it doesn't matter as much but I want to get those tops really inked well. Okay, here we go. One more time. And I think that's probably going to do it. Press down on those. Almost. This one in the corner here is giving me a little trouble. Let's see if that does it. That's a little bit better. I'm going to do that one one more time. And I need to make an ink spot out of this Call Me Clover so that I can get in there with my ink without making a major mess. All right. There we go. That should do it. Yep, I think it does. And at that point, if there's still anything that doesn't have proper coverage, one thing you can do is take your blender pen here. Oh, it's already got the green in it. And just fill in any that isn't completely covered. And it looks just fine, nice and crisp and green. And I got little, little white dots. So I'm going to take those out and blend that color in there. And that came out, other than that, just perfectly well. Now, let me get the color off of this before I forget that I've not done it. All right, so there we've got those. Now, let's see, I am gonna use my chamois and clean up that green a little bit here because I'm gonna be working with both sides and I know me, I will end up with green ink all over myself, not to mention my work surfaces and everything else. Okay, so I'm going to now take my door and switch it around, and I've got my flowers here poised to go down right where I need them on those flower stems. So I'm going to take my Calypso Coral ink spot here and I am going to cover both of those flowers. And this one I know will also take me a couple of times. Again, big, big, solid pieces here on the flowers. And let me put those down. There we go. And I'm going to color them again. And again, you can go over with the blender pen anything that doesn't fill in exactly. Now these little ink spots have the old kind of surface on them, um, so they take a little bit more re-inking. Uh, so don't scrimp. If you need to re-ink them, definitely do so but they're so much more convenient to use with the Stamparatus. There we go. I think this one a little bit on the bottom and we should be all set. Okay, there we go, perfect. All right, now the last thing I did was I used the Knight of Navy 
and I've just got my big one out here. I don't have my Stampin' Spot. So, and you'll notice that that's red rubber compared to these that are not. So I'm going to get that stamped or inked up there. And drop that into place. Now that's not going to take much because it's got the rubber underneath. And I've got a perfect thank you. So there we go. We're all set on that. And once you've done all you're going to do on these tops, then you can take, um, let me get some ink off of some of these things here again so I don't get it all over my hands. Because if I'm working in navy blue or lipstick or red, I can just get it all over the place. <laughs> so now I need this little stamp here and a block. Let me see. There's a little block that's the right size. We'll put that little guy on there and then set my stamparatus aside and bring in my pierce mat. And I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to stamp that one in the Calypso Coral right down here on the bottom. And because I'm not using my Stamparatus, I've only got kind of one shot at this, I'm just going to ink that up and ink that up until I'm absolutely sure and then be ready to go with my blender pen. And I'm going to tuck this flower right here in the corner. And I'm going to hang on to it for a minute and let that ink soak in. Give myself the best chance for success here. And there we go. That's pretty good. But I am going to take my, make sure I've, yeah, uh, take my blender pen here and Fill that in a bit to get the crisp image that I want. Now you could reset this on your Stamparatus to uh, redo this flower and stamp it a couple of times. And, you know, really and truly that's probably what I should have done. Because then I could have stamped and re-stamped and not worried about having to color anything in. Because this way I have to be very careful about getting right in the lines and if you reset it up on your Stamparatus you're you're home free. But I love, like I said, the big bold graphics on this stamp set I think is just as pretty as it can be. Okay so um, there we go and then the only other thing I have to do and that's back with my Knight of Navy here and that is these little dots that are so cute on the tops of the flowers here. And so I'm just going to put a set right here on the inside. And then I'm going to come back here and put a set here. And one here. And then I'm going to set this one up right next to it and there we go and there's our card front just at least stamped at this point okay now i've got my piece oh maybe i didn't cut it um i'll cut my strip here so i'm going to set this up so that it's on the one inch side on this side of my trimmer so that way most of the page is here up against the edge and i'm assured of a straight cut. So I'm going to take one inch off there and then I'm going to take this down to five and a quarter here. Well, I guess I missed that. <laughs> magnets. I've got magnets everywhere. Okay. Let me get all of my ink closed up here. All right, so now I've got my one inch piece of paper here that isn't going to take much more than just some snail. That's the wrong kind of snail. Here we go. Uh, 
nice little couple of lines of snail here a little bit on the ends to make sure those ends get down and set that in place along the bottom of my paper and like I say if I do anything I cut it a little bit long so that I can trim it off but I think I got that one exactly right no edges showing all right now I've got my Calypso Coral Satin Ribbon. Isn't that just gorgeous? And I'm going to set that right down here about half on the paper and half on the card itself. Cut off a little piece and then using um, my silicone mat I'm going to put some snail on my ribbon and set that across like I said so that towards the top of the paper and it makes the paper look like it extends a little bit further so then wrapping that around the back on both sides and there's that piece now we need a simple bow and I'm just going to tie a real quick bow here um, I'm going to announce today that I am going to start a new series. You know I do my Fast and Beautiful series and then I do other cards and I decided that there's so many little odds and ends that I have found a kind of sneaky easy way to do that I'm going to start a, a sort of a quick tips and tricks series um, that'll be starting in the next um, week or so and it'll be a quick video five minutes or less on how to tie a bow like that or how to tie a double bow or a frugal way to cut your paper to use uh, um, to stretch what paper you have or how to use scraps and I think there's enough topics there for me to do a couple of those a month uh, maybe one every other week and they're just going to be fast uh, and I think I like I said I'm going to call it tips and tricks from ink and ingenuity and I'll be starting that soon there we go there's our bow on there that seems real nice and secure and we are ready now to put this on our card base isn't that fun? And it's so simple and so easy that um, it really doesn't take much at all. And like I said, even out of a piece of six by six, I can get, I can coax six of those cards out of that. And so um, again, fast, easy. You could make that a birthday card. You could make it a thank you. You could even make that a sympathy. I think it would be fine. Um, you can change up the colors, change up the paper. This is one of those that I think is a real versatile design that can be used for lots and lots of things. So there we go. And here is our inside piece all ready to go. So let me put a little bit of snail on it. And then we'll have to decide what we want to put on this for sort of the bells and whistles to give it a little extra pop at the end. And I have these little gems. And I'm thinking these gems match this kind of stamped off Calypso coral look. These are the faceted dots is what they're called. And let's just see how that works. And I'm going to take off a couple of these little dots here these faceted dots and I'm going to put them around I think I think that matches pretty well so I'm going to take a couple of these medium sized ones I'll probably only put three on here but just to give a little shimmer and shine and then maybe one of the little ones right down here on the bottom 
and I'll do that to this one as long as I'm at it. So I ended up with one up here, one, I'm going to put this one on this side, and then uh, one of these right down here on the bottom. And there, I think that finishes it off nicely. And I think it matches it pretty well. I'm sure that's Grapefruit Grove, but this stamped off Calypso Coral almost looks like that Grapefruit Grove. So there we go. That is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. I do so appreciate it. And um, this material can all be purchased on my website. Um, www.albedinger.stampinup.net or visit my blog www.inkandingenuity.com and if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator I'd love to be your demonstrator and or you could join my team the offer for joining this month um, through March actually is $175 worth of product for $99 and that's a very good deal plus there's an offer that you can take advantage of if you choose to, to buy the amazing tote for $50. Um, then, um, let's see, the prize draw for this month is the Well Said Bundle, which is the stamp set that has over 50, I think it's 51 um, uh, sentiments here, in large and some smaller here and there boy there's just about anything in the world you could imagine and then part of that bundle is also the well said framelits i think it's well said well written well written flat framelits here that have all different kinds of things that's got welcome and happy and love and um all all kinds of stuff and a bride and groom it's just a huge set. It's a $75 value in the catalog. So all you have to do to be in the drawing for that is to make an order on my website. So um, again, thanks so much for stopping by. And I'll be back soon with more cards and more projects. Bye.